everybody. Good afternoon. I'm Jane Rocky Rasmussen again, and I'm here. I'm a organizing member of the Sakura Japanese Film Festival Committee. It's my great pleasure today to introduce Sadashi Nakamura. Let me tag. Every year, the Sacramento Japanese Film Festival shows at least one documentary. On this, on this the 10th anniversary of the Sacramento Japanese Film Festival, we felt it appropriate to honor an emerging filmmaker whose body of work is not only an excellent example of documentary filmmaking, but through incorporating themes of social consciousness and community building, contributes to making the world a better place. I'm going to read from Taz's website bio because it's the best best summarizes um, your amazing achievements in documentary over the last 11 or so years, 10 or 11 years. Los Angeles-based filmmaker Tadashi Nakamura was named one of CNN's young people who rock for being the youngest filmmaker at the 2008 Sundance Film Festival, as well as one of the 30 most influential Asian Americans under 30 by the popular website of Angry Asian Man. I think around 34 now? Wow. <laughs> Nakamura's trilogy of documentary films on the Japanese American experience, Yellow Brotherhood in 2003, which we showed at our second film festival, Pilgrimage in 2007, and A Song for Ourselves in 2009 have garnered over 20 awards at film festivals around the world, with Pilgrimage being one of 83 short films out of 7,500 submissions selected for the 2008 Sundance Film Festival. And now Life on Forced Dreams in 2013 has racked up at least another seven that I got. Film scholar B. Ruby Rich remarked, Nakamura takes the joy of activism and makes it downright contagious. <coughs> something. Um, he has an education, Bachelor of Arts, um, UCLA, and he has a Master of Arts in Social Documentation from the UCLA, University of California, Santa Cruz. So go banana slugs. <laughs> <laughs> so Tad, we will introduce Barbara now. She wants to come on up. Barbara our chairperson, and Barbara will present Tad with our first ever. And I have to say that when we saw uh, Yellow Brotherhood in 2006, we knew that this was an emerging talent. It, it, it's, it's good, clean work. Uh, Tad is very, very uh, uh, sensitive to his subject. He does not interfere with the subject, and he showcases uh, uh, the material so well that uh, I think that your subjects open up to you, and you have a very good uh, interactive relationship with him. And interestingly enough, he is also the son of a filmmaker, you know, Robert Nakamura. I stole their thunder. <laughs> Sorry, I shut up. <laughs> but it's such an honor that you know Tad um, uh, was is able to come. He, he, he took a one day flight out of um, LA. He will be going back after dinner tonight, and um, Carla Mayer was able to meet him uh, this afternoon for just a short while. She was in the theater uh, to see the, the show that you saw. And this is the award, the very first ever Emerging Film Festival Award uh, for Filmmaker Award for an Emerging Filmmaker with Talent. Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, thank you for the award and congratulations uh, to the festival and all the volunteers and organizers on, on 10 years. That's, that's really awesome. Um, 
So yeah, both, both of my parents are, are documentary filmmakers, so um, in a way, I kind of uh, was always exposed to doc the documentary form, and specifically uh, documentary form within a community context. So it was always, um, my interest into film was actually through my student activism and community organizing as, a, as an undergrad at UCLA, and was really taught that a uh, camera could be a tool uh, for community organizing, for advocacy, uh, as well as uh, documentation, uh, because our communities, um, you know, are often ignored by mainstream media and the academy. So, uh, you know, we we have to depend on ourselves to tell our own stories and and preserve the stories and, you know, from each generation to the next. Musicians Chris, Chris Kijima and Jake Shimabukuro are the subjects of two of your documentaries. Was it their stories or their music that originally drew you in? Um, well, I think in general I'm actually more of a music fan than a film fan even. Um, you know, I, I think I spend more time talking about music than I do film. So, uh, but you know, both Chris Ijima and Jake, when people think about Asian Americans, uh, even, you know, growing up I never saw myself as, as an artist or could be an artist. And I think people like Chris and, and Jake were very visible. You know, Chris Ijima was very visible in the 70s. Jake's very visible now. I think it's you know inspiring. It breaks stereotypes uh, for what people think of Asian Americans, but also too, um, it's not just being an artist, but they they utilize their form and they they don't take uh, the ears that are listening to them for granted, and they really kind of use it to either promote you know change or pr promote positivity and um, take their role in the community and in the world. You know, at, they take themselves seriously as role models to try to you know, represent as many people as they can through their art. I find it very encouraging that a fourth generation Japanese American, a Yonsei, is old enough and who's just old enough to be my younger brother, <laughs> <laughs> he is interested in the history of his parents' era in both pilgrimage and a song for ourselves. You delve into what I would call the recent past, the late 60s and early 70s, and the social activism within the Asian community and the country at large. What direction do you see social activism in the U.S. in particular? Um, well, that was you know the one thing that um, why I chose to document the Asian American movement is is just as a student, whenever I would see talk about the '60s, it was either um, white, brown, or black. And uh, while the Asian American movement was you know specifically inspired by the Black Power movement. I think, again, it's very inspiring to, if you see a generation before you, um, you know, raising their issues, protesting, uh, speaking out, I think that, again, inspires the next generation of Asian Americans, or just the next gener generation of Americans, to, to be able to know that they can do that if they want. Um, I think, currently, there's a lot of, unfortunately, I think there's a lot of horrible things continually going on, but the backlash of that is that there's a whole new movement, um, whether it's you know um, undocumented students, uh, dreamers, uh, whether it's people fighting for legalization, whether it's people fighting for you know fair wages, and and whether it's fighting for you know women protect, protecting their own reproductive uh, rights. I think there's there's a lot of new issues on the table, and therefore a whole other generation of activists. That are, you know, besides continuing the fight that previous generations started, but we also have our own fights that we're waging. And uh, I think a lot of great, um, a lot of great art, a lot of great minds, and a lot of great um, students are being developed through that. I heard an interview of yours where you said you would love to do a sports documentary. Is there anything on the horizon you'd like to share? No, I mean, uh, I, I think, yeah, growing up. I was actually more into sports than films. Even having two filmmakers as parents, um, I, you know, I would much rather. Uh, I thought I was going to play for the Raiders instead of being a filmmaker. <laughs> so, <laughs> that obviously didn't happen. Um, but I, I do. I, do I, I love sports documentaries. Um, I think you know ESPN's Thirty for Thirty series is probably the most frequent films that I watch all the time. Uh, but I, I, nothing's on the horizon, uh, but I would love to, to do, uh, especially a football, high school football documentary, because uh, that's, I grew up playing football, and I think, um, you know, anyone who's, who's had a, who's played high school football, 
or as you know, kids who play high school sports, I think that's kind of the pure form of a team sport is at that age. And I think um, to tell that from an Asian American perspective would be interesting. So you have no new documentary you're working on at this point, or any move, any film that you're working on? Well, yeah. Well, I do, just not sports related. So I'm currently working on another documentary in Hawaii with the same people that I worked on the Jake film with, and we're following um, two uh, muralists who used to be big graffiti writers in the '80s. Um, they go by the name of Estrella and Prime, and they're uh, currently uh, working with different schools and different groups of Native Hawaiian youth and doing spray can murals, but to implement uh, Native Hawaiian culture and their language within the context and content of the, of the mural. When will this one be done? We're, we're just kind of in the middle of it, so um, probably not within, maybe hopefully within the next year and a half we'll be done with that. You'll remember us to, to screen it for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to have you. documentaries both informative and enlightening and we look forward to all your future endeavors. We really appreciate you being here. It's been a pleasure having you.